Awakening Your Everyday Wisdom, video number one, part B. Now in part A, if you didn't catch it, I just talked about some of the things that are impacting our world today and our near future, our changing world. And in part B, I'm going to talk about how do we maintain our balance, how do we access our own everyday wisdom. So that's, this is the how-to part of the video. Take what you like, leave the rest. I'm not trying to push anything. These are just my ideas on ways that we can navigate this rather interesting future that looks to be right ahead of us. So I'll start by asking you a few questions. So have you ever had an experience or witnessed an event that didn't fit into our traditional concepts of reality? Something a little weird maybe happened in your life? Some of us who have these experiences, we go, now was that real? <laughs> we question our own eyes and our own feelings sometimes. So how about you? Have you had any freaky little experiences that maybe you even want to forget about? Another question, do you have this uneasy feeling that something's not quite right in the world? And it could just be from disinformation or misinformation or fake news or our politicians acting like children or things like genocide and slavery happening right now in this day and age or robots that can think on their own. I mean, it's a pretty strange little world we've got with a lot of dichotomies. But what about you? Do you feel uneasy about this? If you do, it could be your inner wisdom trying to get your attention, trying to get you to come to grips with some of it so that you can continue to be the creative being that you are. So how do you know what's real? Every now and then I'll ask people that question and the first thing they do, almost without doubt, is they'll bang on a table and they'll go, that's real. <laughs> well, scientists today are saying that's an illusion. <laughs> so it's a little tricky. There are aspects of reality in the physical world that we have come to count on. Now in the simulation theory, those are called the game rules. In Newtonian thinking, that's the way the world works. In quantum physics, that table is not solid. Even though it appears to be solid, it feels solid, by the way, our brain is interpreting the vibrations that are emitted from the atoms in that table. <laughs> it's getting a little strange. So where do you get your information? Now, this has been a challenge for me. I like to listen rather than read. So I like to listen to videos and watch documentaries but I do some reading, but I also have lost a little faith in some of the stuff I've read. For example, history books. It is perplexing to me to find that history, even American history, is being reinterpreted and has been rewritten according to some sources. So I'm like, holy smokes, if we can't even trust our history books. And then there are some challenges. Now, please, I'm not trying to be sacrilegious here, but there are some challenges as to the validity of some of the stuff that we find in our religious scriptures. Some people have completely turned off to religion because they can't get their arms around some of the stuff in the scriptures. Other people are taking the scriptures so literally that it's coming into a juxtaposition with science. So we've got to do our own work in this area and find our own 
center. So here's some ways that you can find that center, that you can access your own everyday wisdom. One is question what you think and question why you think that way. Question your own beliefs, not to say that you can't continue to follow your religious practices, of course not, but look at them and don't, you know, the word faith is you don't need proof, you operate on faith, and that's fine in a lot of ways, especially when it comes to your everyday wisdom, because oftentimes we don't have proof for it. We just follow our intuition, we follow our inner gut, we follow our higher wisdom, our higher power, we might follow scripture. And then also question incoming information. We have a ton of stuff coming at us every day and it's been proven some of it is just devious to control the minds of people, especially consumers. And why are we being subjected to mind control? Oh, that's a good question. Look into it. So question the sources of information as well. I've named a few sources of information in part A. I've questioned them. I felt like they were probably on spot. But you might look at that stuff and say, whew, that's off base. And then research topics that are you're drawn to, especially if you have a sense of being on a spiritual mission. Research everything that has to do with the mission that you're on. So for example, my spiritual mission is to contribute to the conscious evolution of humanity. Wow, that's pretty big in some ways, scares me in some ways, but I know that I'm supposed to say something to help us evolve our consciousness. And that's what this video series is all about. But your spiritual mission is what should be guiding you, not mine, and examine it. Why do you have that? Are you operating from guilt? Are you operating from intrigue? Are you operating from this just sense of, yep, I got to do this. I feel compelled on the internal side. And then decide what fits into your subjective reality. Let's talk a little bit about the difference between objective reality and subjective reality. So objective reality is that which emanates from outside of the individual. And some of the qualifiers are that it's supposed to be the same for everybody who observes it and it's supposed to be consistent over time, and it's supposed to be something that we can measure and experiment with. So objective reality is something that's supposed to exist independently of our beliefs. Whoa, I'm not sure that exists. So I think our subjective reality is where we need to put our attention. What is true for me today is very different from what is true for somebody who's working in a sweatshop in Bangladesh. Their reality is altogether different from what I experience. So I can't say that there's an objective reality that we would share. But our subjective reality is where we put our attention. What's true for us? What do we need to be doing with our time on planet Earth? How do we interact with other beings and how do we anticipate our future? How do we decide what's real? All of that is subjective. So seek out others who are also questioning and examining, maybe going through their own awakening. Get some conversations going with other people. You could join my blog or you can make comments on this website. Uh, you could join all kinds of blogs and listen to lots of vlogs. And then think, ponder, and imagine. Albert Einstein is quoted as having said, imagination is more important than knowledge. That's a huge statement. 
So let's use our imaginations. So a couple ways to maintain your balance in life and also your confidence in life. So one is to follow your own religious or spiritual path. I think that's gonna keep us grounded more than anything. Now, if your particular religious viewpoint doesn't answer some of the questions that are coming up today, you might need to look around, you might need to find something that grounds you in the reality of our changing world. But that's up to you. Whatever you do, make sure it helps you feel like you've got both feet on the ground. That's what we're looking at here. Listen to your spiritual teachers. They, they have been doing a lot of thinking on this, a lot of praying, a lot of meditating. They have a lot of wisdom. So listen to them and develop healthy habits. Oh, we've heard about this since kindergarten, right? Maybe before. I think now it's more important than ever. We've got a lot of destruction going on in our food supply. We have air quality issues. When I look at the videos of people in Japan wearing all those air masks, I go, whoa, this is really getting a bit scary. And I just think that if we aren't taking care of ourselves and we're not trying to keep our bodies together and whole, it's going to be hard to go into a changing future. Spending time outdoors is a really good idea. Right now, there's still a lot of fresh air available. Some of people are predicting we're not going to have fresh air in the United States. Now, bigger cities, it's challenging, but if you can get out in the hills, that's a good place to be. But being outdoors usually makes people feel better. It lifts the mood. And clean up your past. You know, if you're still hanging on to stuff that happened 15 years ago, he did this to me or she said that, and I'm still mad about it, or if you got family rifts, go ahead and get them cleaned up. Forgiveness is huge. We are all in this together. We're like bumbling idiots. We make lots of mistakes. We hurt each other. Sometimes we mean to, sometimes we don't. But let's let go of all that. We have bigger things to think about today and our near future. So if the past is still affecting your ability to be present today, get it cleaned up. That's my recommendation. And in your primary relationships, if your communication is not working well, if you're not in a support system, if you don't trust the people in your life, those are issues that need to be addressed because we need each other. We are going to need to join forces with other people of like mind, maybe not even of like mind. I mean, if an asteroid hits the Earth, a lot of things are going to change. You know? And there have been predictions. If Yellowstone blows, I'm in Montana, that's going to change a lot. So we need each other. We don't need to be fighting with each other, especially those that we love. And then make sure you do the things that you love. Our world can get really shrunk with work and family and keeping our homes nice and tidy and our cars and our clothing and all of our possessions. That can take up a lot of our time. But if you don't love those things, if you'd rather be playing music or um, playing with a kitten, whatever brings you joy, do the things that you love. It's really, really important. And I'm not necessarily saying hot buttered popcorn in a sitcom every night. <laughs> you might like that once in a while, but if it becomes habitual and if it's an escape, I'm not talking about getting drunk every Saturday night or whatever we do to escape our reality. I'm saying do the things that your heart loves, that your spirit loves. 
Those are the things that will keep you healthy and happy. Now, here's my biggest suggestion of all. And I'm probably going to say this in almost every video. Sit quietly for at least a few minutes every day. And if you can't do it every day, most days. Even if you only spend five minutes before you go to bed at night. Just turn off the TV, turn down the lights, maybe put on some soothing music, but give your mind a chance to unwind. And give your higher wisdom, your everyday wisdom, a chance to get to you. If you can't hear it, it's not gonna do much good. So if we can sit quietly, open ourselves up to our highest intentions, our everyday wisdom, it will guide us through choppy waters. So those are all the suggestions I have for today. Thank you for listening. Uh, there are a lot of people that can give you support. There are a lot of coaches. There are a lot of therapists. There are a lot of yoga teachers and, um, and just all the scientists. We've got a lot of sources to us, um, for us. So access those sources of help if you find yourself struggling. And if you'd like to make comments on the video, I'm open. I'm not trying to convince anybody of anything. I want to get a dialogue going. So make your comments. Join my blog on my website. And like, share, subscribe. All that's real good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate you being a part of this video, and I wish you well.